Hi guys, for all these thousands and thousands of games that I played uh, in StarCraft 2 co-op, uh, I played maybe two or three, four games <laughs> only of uh, Unconquered Spirit. <laughs> I really kind of didn't get this prestige, like uh, friends were telling me that it's uh, like weaker P2. Uh, so I did... Uh, make a question in reddit i asked people what do they think about this prestige do they play more play it more do they like it uh, one guy answered that it's exactly as i said it seems uh, uh weaker p it's a weaker p uh, too but uh, one guy got a really interesting uh, uh answer uh, so he said that this is a uh, my favorite prestige of his the cheaper units make it worth uh, worth it for them to die and uh, supercharge their champion okay so when he said cheaper units i wasn't like uh, okay did, did he messed up p2 and p3 but then again i mean cheaper yeah, if the champions die and you get a reference so it's uh, overall it's kind of cheaper but uh, it's actually p2 that has uh, units cheaper i mean cheaper production uh, just uh, remember to build extra production and watch as you can clear just about anything with just zealots adepts and colossi kaldalis with full support hits for 90 aoe uh, damage when he attacks and uh, each attack of his hits twice <coughs> okay i agree i've also never seen anyone else use this prestige yeah i said that um, you know i really didn't uh, uh, see maybe once or twice I can't remember uh, seeing uh, people playing this prestige, I mean allies, uh, but I think it's seriously slept on, just uh, treated kind of like playing Zerg in that more disposable units uh, is the priority to a few powerful ones and build uh, to support an army like that. Okay, so I decided to do exactly what he said, uh, uh, use uh, Zealots, Adept and uh, Colossi. So here we go, I was on Oblivion Express having uh, Raynor 6. Uh, ally, this is actually good because I'm one ally that will do everything so I cannot actually observe what, uh, what my units do, like having Lone Wolf or something like that or Statman. Uh, okay, this is of course replay because uh, when you play, I mean when I play, I cannot really observe what my units are doing, uh, so for replay is better for that. Okay, let's speed it up a bit, uh, slow it down later, I was a uh, rebel raider. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's go to my thing. Uh, Okay, to get one gas, then the pylon, then two gates, then the second ga gas, and uh, that was my opening. I really didn't ha don't have very fine Phoenix openings because uh, Phoenix is my least played commander overall, but this prestige, uh, the least of all of them. So, getting Twilight in Cybercore. I'll add Robos later, of course, now I don't have money. I wanna get Kaldalis to clear my rocks. And I'll uh, start the warp gates, of course. Okay, now uh, we Kaldi. Okay, Kaldi actually has Avenging Protocol when he starts. So that's kind of interesting. Look at this. Uh, Kaldalis, when he starts, is it's kind of warp haste. Now, is it normal for Kaldalis? Uh, Norm without this prestige, I'm not sure actually. So uh, I think it should be, but now at the start you have kind of good warp haste. Look at this because he jumped into a new shell, so that's the thing. So move speed already like 50% and weapon speed uh, 100%. So that's uh, that's really good. So now uh, Kaldi will this normal speed cal okay now he's he slowed down but uh, still clear rocks pretty fast okay <coughs> getting the area damage thingy 
For Kaldi, I was uh, having life and shield, so you can see that he has uh, more life and shields than a sentinel because uh, of the masteries, but uh, because it, uh, if I get uh, attack speed, it could be uh, over the maximum. I mean, animation speed kind of has a limit. I don't really know wh which is the limit, but uh, never observed that. Okay, now I actually go to defend this Vitalis to see what she can do, but you can see she will she will actually die pretty fast. I don't have yet another Talis. Okay. Um, okay, now I have another Talis. Okay, I have uh, both. Uh, did I do? Oh, I didn't. Oh, uh, that's actually a mistake. Okay, now I correct it. I got the uh, debilitation system first and then the normal units upgrades. I do have charge though. Do, did I have charge? I think I do already have charge for... Yeah, I do have charge. Okay. Um, expansion. And now I'm adding some robos and more pylons. I have Kaldi, Talis, uh, one extra adept and two extra legionnaires. Okay, so Kaldi... Hmm. Okay, so you can see Talis has range only two while the adepts normally have five. That's that range reduction. There was never a doubt. And I got the observer, although I probably don't need it yet, but I did get it first. <laughs> I think I lost that observer. Okay, now I'll add another robo and uh, leave the robo bay, but gates first. Gates first. Okay, I like uses Hyperion over there. Let's speed it up. Okay, my macro is kinda sucks. Okay, I have energizer upgrades, so I will be adding a few more over there over here. I mean uh, not a few more but first first two. Decided to use and they've also debate should you use energizer or not because they are, then uh, your dudes will die faster. And then, I mean if they don't die then you have a normal army, if they die you have a uh, stronger champions. So uh, okay, I'm using uh, Dragoon over here to do the job. And then switching to Arbiter suits so Dragoon can regen. I do have, of course, offline region. Offline region. Okay, they are my first uh, Colossi, and Warbringer is out. So Warbringer has uh, seven rage, while normal Colossus has. Uh, okay, so now it's actually the thing that Warbringer has more range uh, than normal Colossus because I don't yet have the uh, extended thermal lens. So it's kind of funky. I thought that external extended thermal lens affect the Warbringer, but it seems not. So it has fixed range of seven, while uh, uh, these Colossi have six. But when they have external, when they get extended extended thermal lens, then they have nine range, and Warbringer will stay at seven. Okay, and you can see the Avengers uh, Protocol when first appeared. Okay, now I'll defend. I have a decent little army over here that can deal with that. Chronoing the Warbringer. Seeing Devastating Blast first, of course, and then uh, extended thermal lens. Okay, I think I didn't lose anything actually there. Okay, let's see. If that, oh, I did lose one unit. <coughs> Okay, Ella unfortunately is totally missing this prestige. I mean, you have orbital combined, you should have orbital command normally. But he does. Oh no! And only now he's getting orbitals. 
Yeah, I think Rena has an orbital command right from the start, so uh, from level one. So uh, okay, now Kaldi dies, Talis dies. Let's see. So for Kaldalis, of course, this uh, range reduction is nothing because he is melee, so no disadvantage there. Uh, and uh, let's see, minus. Po okay, that's I think the top. That it's now full stacks of. Uh, because uh, several, I think, legionaries died, so this is the maximum. Uh, like minus 64, that's uh, 0.16 attack speed, that's like uh, almost 6 attacks per. Uh, almost 6 attacks per uh, second, which is uh, really good. <laughs> and attacks 2, attacks 2, so that's like. See that, that's actually no, no that's actually uh, like ten to eleven attacks per uh, a second, which is crazy. It's like almost like whirlwind animation. So now Kaldal is actually doing a lot of damage to this train. Okay, now Colossi have their extended, as you can see. Warbringer stays at 7. Okay, de dealt with this train. Is he muling? No, he's not muling. Okay, he wants to attack here. Why here? Ah, he thought that hybrid would come, but hybrid is here. Okay, I mean... Yeah, this kind of bamboozled me, but okay. Uh, I decided... Nah, no, <laughs> not need... No need to go there. I definitely don't want to use... Suit there. Okay, so you do have we do have ta tactical data web also. Now tactical data web. Let's see. Yeah. So it says 20 plus 12.5, okay. So tactical data web is also useful. Okay, Kaldi dies, dies again. Okay, a lot of sentinels die. And now I have Kaldi, look at how fast he goes now. Unfortunately, I think I f oh I didn't f oh yeah, but it, it, it's I was on F2 then <laughs> this thing died. I think I lost like five six uh, energizers uh, and uh, conservators over here. Okay, oh Phoenix. Okay, you don't want to lose Phoenix. That's nothing but a loss. So uh, no benefits from losing Phoenix Phoenix suit. Okay, this was pretty good for uh, on, thi on this. So I must admit that I actually, uh, it's it's easier for me to play like this because otherwise you need to just send champions and you, you hotkey them so when, uh, when a new uh, unit becomes a champion, I mean when old one dies then it automatically is assigned to a hotkey. 
so you don't need to do it all all the time but the thing is then if you have a uh, air composition like fleet of the matriarch then it kind of complicates things and it makes me harder actually to to do this uh, like and then units trickle champions trickle one by one and get picked off although they are stronger but uh, it can be uh, i mean against ground it's uh, mostly useful because kaldal is uh, ravages everything but uh, the thing is that for me it's actually easier to play like this. Okay, we have uh, the protective. Uh, field here. Uh -huh, I was not uh, very agile with this. Okay, now I'm using it. So no protective field in time, but okay. This train will still go down pretty fast now. Didn't know how much L I actually did. There you go. We got it. Okay, let's see the Yeah, this is the six trains. So now we have the double train. Let's speed it up. Okay, I have decent army now. I have a nice number of adepts, and decent number of legionnaires, six colossi. I think I'll be adding two more. Okay, I, uh, I was very late with forges. I forgot them actually, so upgrades wise, uh, it's pretty bad for me. But other than that, it was kind of okay. Okay, I could have added a few immortals against this composition, but I decided to. To do what this guy suggested using adepts, uh, zealots, and colossi, uh, it was actually pretty fine. Okay, now Ella is kinda alone over here. He has no masteries, but he can have Hyperion fairly often. As he has a lot of battle cruisers now. And yeah, he is, I think, not muling, and he is not muling at all, he is, uh, he is just scanning. <laughs> okay, he got decent number of battle cruisers even without mules, but I mean, he would have been maxed out by now. He, he even almost is. <laughs> He actually is, okay. Okay, let's see. Kaldalis has 239 kills, Talis has 85, Warbringer 69. Okay. Now just the last train. I reckon they're running out of hardware to ship. Almost. Our allies are being attacked. Well, if I used the. No, I didn't use Dragon because it doesn't have a lot of energy. So I'm just cloaking our stuff and. Going for a win. Okay, look at how look at this. How Kaldalis kills everything. <laughs> Kaldalis is just going, going, going. And that's GG. Okay. So I wasn't sure how much actually I did, how much L I did. But uh, that can be checked out. Uh, that's this game, so you can see I have like two and a half times his kills, I mean of course you cannot expect uh, level 6 Raynor to carry you, but that's fine. As I said, I didn't want something strong to actually, uh, like do doing everything and uh, I mean I think you can see train damage, okay train damage is bug, I think I did a bit more than that. 
but I uh, still I think at least double his uh, train damage. This the number so sometimes it even shows the negative uh, train damage uh, for one player if, if the other one is overwhelmingly like uh, better in that regard. Uh, damage dealt by champions, okay, nice, over 100,000. Damage dealt by Phoenix, uh, it's less than 30,000, so it's okay. Pretty good, uh, Kaldal is most of this probably. And now let's see the our... Uh, okay, that's, that's it. So you can see that um, Kaldalis died 15 times, also lost uh, 38 Legionnaires, so that's a lot of Avenging Protocol. And um, Talis died uh, three times, okay, once it was in vain when I didn't have uh, one extra uh, suit available, that's uh, at the very start against the first wave, but okay, uh, Colossus uh, 73 kills, I think that, uh, yeah, how much, uh, 60 something was from Warbringers, so Warbringers uh, was only short of this, but it only shows first five. And <coughs> Legionnaires also did have 100 kills, so pretty good. And Ta Talis actually did more than, yeah, Ricochet Glaive is very good. Did more than uh, all her adepts, so 101 kills over there. But as for train damage, I'm pretty sure that Calde did most. <laughs> so that's it, so it's kind of pretty okay prestige. It's better than P0. Like, uh, I think it's definitely better than P0. Okay, you don't want to use it like when you have like Minesweeper or something, when you have, when you want to have a bigger range on your Warbringer, but... Uh, uh, and, and uh, well, on champions, but uh, in most cases, like, it is stronger than P0, uh, and it's kind of easier to use than P2, but I think P2 is still uh, uh, stronger. Okay, especially if you want to uh, uh, use stuff individually on multiple sides. That's the thing. Uh, on Oblivion Express, I actually like to use a Kundalar PvP one because the special Dragoon suit is there is good there when you whenever you have Dragoon suit with full energy, then it clears uh, everything, even with strong waves. So uh, that's uh, what I like. But this is also pretty good. Okay guys that's it uh, thanks for watching like and subscribe if you liked it uh, and support me on patreon if you need help or just want to support me and thanks again see you guys